So now we are uh, starting the second conference with Vlad. Hello, Vlad. How are you? Hello, Paolo. Well, I'm excellent. I'm uh, at home uh, for, for two months already. Two months? My, yes, my skin is started to, to beginning so white <laughs> as a bat in, in, in its cave. And uh, I will uh, try to exercise my English as I don't speak a lot at home, you know, but uh, from now on, I, okay. I, I, I hope to, to cope with... Uh, it's okay. So yeah, before, yeah. before we start with you and I give you the word, I want to say a few words of presentation, of introduction. So thank you. Many people know you, but some others don't. So who, who are you? <laughs> so you were born in 1978. Sorry, I gave you age. Well, you, were, no you were born in Bucharest in Romania. You are actually an architect. You've got a PhD le uh, lecturer at University of Architecture and Urbanism in Bucharest since 2003. Um, so architecture, it's interesting as background for street photography. And uh, since 2005, you are also um, assistant at the architectural design uh, department at, uh, it's the university, I guess, yeah, UA, yes. yeah. And especially you have made a book, uh, a course, Photography as a methodi Methodical Study Tool in Architecture. So you're quite, uh, uh, trained in, in giving lectures and workshops, that's good. And well, in photography, it's really uh, one of, of the passion that has uh, driven you for this last, uh, I guess, 15 years. You will tell us a little bit more later. But important, you have won some important prizes, awards. I mean, for example, the low light category of the Sony World Photo Contest, well, in 2014. So congratulations for that. And Thank you. Another, other prizes. Um, just I just quote one or two sentences, and then I will I will go to background. So my photos are an emotional archive of everyday life of people in the streets that show us sensitive details, emotions. Either either with a camera or with a mobile phone, the photo becomes a magic instrument. So with these words, with your words, I uh, I'm happy to give you the word, pass you the word, and now it will be our pleasure to listen for, to your presentation. After your presentation, so people stay tuned, stay with us, and you can, during the presentation, you can, uh, in the chat box, can put questions that we will we'll later uh, ask uh, Vlad to explain us. So, sorry again for my English, but it's, it's okay, we, we don't manage. So, Vlad, it's up to you now. Thank you, Paolo, and I'm very glad to be here in uh, <clears throat> the Street Photography Festival. I have to say a word in Romanian for my uh, Romanian fellows. Vă salut, vă îmbrățișez și vă mulțumesc că ați venit să fim împreună aici în cadrul acestei conferințe. Sper să ne placă. Uh, I have to cope with my emotions now. Uh, I prepared the presentation. What I want to say to you is that I do photography for passion. I discovered the mechanism, the inner mechanism of doing photography and of storytelling and of emotional uh, speech in uh, these years of practicing photography. And um, as long as people started to ask me, hey Vlad, how are you doing this? How do you did your photo? It was staged. Uh, do you, did you use some additional lights? How do you do this? And for me, it was just a pure emotion and a pure uh, joy to be in the streets and to discover the city. I have to drive through my secrets, as you might like to say, and to discover uh, the inner mechanism of the photography, the street photography, as I see it. And for this, I prepared a presentation. I usually do kilometrical presentation. Uh, people tend to forget about the hour, but now we have specifically one hour to, to be into. So I, I try to be uh, very uh, short. And I will just start my presentation here because I have prepared some nice photos for you that uh, I will try to inspire you. What it's about in my photography, it's about an alchemy between elements as observation, space, lightning, time, and emotion. 
everything's come together for the most joyful moment in photography, as I called it, the state of grace in photography, the moment of grace. Starting, of course, with the observation that Henri Cartier-Bresson, which is the master of street photography for me, was discovering by the decisive moment and I tried just to get over this and to discover something new, something more complex. And I reached for this state of grace uh, concept that I will try to explain in this 45 minutes uh, through a couple of chapters that I prepared specifically for this. When I was, but you have to understand that I do believe that street photography is very personal and I don't believe in recipes in phot photography. Many people tend to look at the fashion and to see in the internet what's going on and to, to copy and to replicate photographers and photograph they, that they ad admire. I try to be myself, I try to be authentic, and this is the key of discovering yourself and discovering the world. You start by knowing nothing, as a child has no idea of what's happening in, in the world uh, at a certain moment. And after that, by growing and, and exploring, he discovers secrets and he goes further in the dynamics of his inner hero discovery. The street photography for me, it's the um, uh, awaken of the inner hero in the relationship with the unknown world and invisible layers that he can unveil. I was a shy uh, child. I'm shy now also. I'm a shy person. If you look at me, I, I get red ears and I get uh, red uh, cheeks and I tend to put my, my eyes down. But when I get the camera with me in my hand and uh, on, on, in front of my eyes, something changed inside me and I discovered this starting uh, 2004, 2005 when I discovered film photography that I, I tend to change myself like uh, Hulk, you know, it becomes a, a, a green uh, uh, hero and a powerful one. And my inner uh, hero was uh, waiting for the camera to come into place, but it was not enough because I was, uh, I had some fears, of course, regarding the city, regarding the unknown world and the person that I, I can uh, uh, intersect on street. But also I had this curiosity of the inner child. My inner child, now also it's, it's uh, available, it's very curious and it wants to discover the world and to, 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 browse, to uh, browse in some uh, old stuff and, and to discover new things. And um, linking together this contradiction, these two poles, different poles, the curiosity and the fear, together brings a new mechanism uh, which reveals the inner hero. These are some of my uh, best known images that I bring now to you in this introduction. I had the joy of being there, of being emotional with my subjects, of uh, having a personal experience that I could not gain by uh, trying to reach a model or somebody else's photography. I was trying to be myself and trying to discover the world on my own. And the best images appeared when I was there, when I was connected with the world uh, in a way that only photography could bring into the light some hidden layers. Without the camera, maybe I can't see details. When I feel the camera with me, the world starts to reveal itself and I start to see things and to, to uh, see these marvels around us. So these are some images that I really uh, like to share with you of different moments in, in town, of light and movement and moments and emotion, because I think a good photography uh, brings this balance between being somewhere, understanding why, uh, getting emotional, um, 
getting a reaction, a spontaneous reaction, and just closing your mind and letting out the inner hero. This is an image I took in Rome while I was waiting for someone. I was surrounded by statues, old statues, which were there centuries ago. And still the world was moving and things like ephemeral ones and permanent ones was, uh, were getting very well together. So I just raised my, my eyes and, and I saw that plane passing and I saw that statue and I thought to myself, I have to have a reaction. And maybe this is the definition of being uh, somewhere, doing something, uh, even that you don't know what are you going to do, what are you going to, to, to see, or what is going to happen. This is the motto that drives me, that the challenge is to be in the right place at the right time, but knowing nothing on what's going to happen. And with this feeling and with uh, some uh, drops of intuition, suddenly things come together, come at the right place, and only, uh, the only thing you have to do is just to be there and to react and to make the click on the camera. Intuition is very important and it's like a sixth sense because you have to rely on what you can't see, but you feel that it's in the very around of you and you have to, to discover it. And I try to keep this example of this puff uh, when they say that if you are trying to get a puff into your hands, the air that you move will push it. So you have just to wait the puff to come to you and to put itself into your hand. It's like the things happens in street photography, in my opinion, that if you push, if you run, if you are loud, and if you are, uh, how do you say, um, you don't know exactly how to do and how to, to react, you just have to stay. You just have to be there and things will come to you. And it's Hercule Poirot that also have a nice uh, speech in uh, the murder on the Orient Express because he say, I can see the world as it should be, which doesn't fit the right, the right place, uh, strikes into my eyes and uh, I, I, I discover it immediately. It's how I uh, go on streets by feeling what is normal and feeling what is going to get out of this normal way of, of being. And when this vibration occurs, I feel and I know that I have to react and I have to discover something. So street photographers maybe can be uh, as uh, Hercule Poirot uh, character and try to, to discover things nobody else can discover. Normal people, which normal people, uh, of course, it's a way of, of saying things, ask me, wow, I didn't saw this. How do you manage? Well, I don't manage. I just have to do this. I have to discover what other people can't discover in order for me to show them uh, what they missed. So this is my uh, inner mechanism of trying to be in one right place and to show people what they are missing. And I would like to remember here the character of Doru, which is a person, it's not a street or not a city, but it's a, it, it, he was a nice, very nice person, which I encountered in Vama Veke. And uh, he was like a rebel. And I didn't like it because I thought he could be an excellent grandfather, but instead he chose to lose his life there in Vama Veke by drinking and not sleeping and dancing all day. And I was looking with pity. And one day Doru came to me, just came to me and to my group. He uh, verified that we were not drinking any beer. We actually, we were drinking some nice lemonade. And he came to us and he said, oh, you are awake. I will speak to you some of my secrets. Whoa, and I uh, suddenly get out of there. It was difficult to, to stay uh, close to him and he, changed himself, suddenly he transformed uh, from a rebel. He became maybe what you see in uh, that uh, movie, 
as uh, the, the good wizard. And the good wizard uh, took some papers from his pockets and he started to, to think, he started to, to tell us a story about the concept of love and of people. And I was getting there and took these photos, not knowing if we must trust him or not. And in the end, uh, he discovered the word that he wanted to say to us, to live in the verb to love. And after, the, after this, he just closed his eyes and he was getting there in perfect silence and we were stunned by this transformation of, of, of his. What I discovered then is that the world has layers and as in the that stories, you can't see for the, from the start everything. You have to become uh, capable of discovering and of being in one place and things reveal themselves if you are able to understand. This is the story of street photography. Everybody looks but not everybody understands. Not everybody could get into the core of a hidden thing, of a secret. So that's why you have to keep this in mind that you have to get a little wiser uh, more attentive and to let things be the way they want to be because otherwise you will just move the puff away and the world that you are looking for will, will uh, get a more maybe uh, distant from you. So it, it's a paradox and you don't want to be part of, of, of a paradox. Yoda is one of my uh, virtual mentors. I never met him but he's with me probably every day. And I like to put on my conferences some of his uh, wisdom because it's, we can transform it into everyday wisdom. It's not something far, far away from us, but it's something that we can do daily with us and with our lives. And in the, this quest of becoming more uh, wiser and more deep inside of myself, I found that Yoda's words are very inspiring and for street photography uh, I find that the number four do or do not there is no try you are on street you have your camera with you you have to react you have to be there you don't have time for doubt you can't put yourself should I do this should I shouldn't I no you don't have time for thinking all you have to do is let yourself flow let yourself go and do things the way your intuition tells. Truly wonderful the mind of a child is, mm, said Yoda also, very uh, smart, very wise, because the inner child is the curious mind and the adult is the one who resolves things. So I let my inner child to do his uh, curiosity stuff, to ask me to get out. Hey, come on, let's get out. It's sunny day and we have so such beautiful things to, to discover there. And uh, the adult, which is uh, thinking, okay, what camera should I take with me? What film should I put? What digital? What lens? Okay, now I have to do this. Do I have time? Do I? <laughs> it's usually this uh, game between the inner child and the adult, uh, which brings this nice game of discovering the world and, to, and, and the desire and the need to be there. So I come back usually at Yoda's uh, wisdom and I find that it's timeless. This picture was that one who won that category at Sony Awards. What I want to say is that it's not a nice picture. It might not be a perfect picture. It's just a picture with some people waiting in the tram station near where I live. I live in that block uh, that in, in, in the background of, of this image. And it was the first snow of the year, maybe um, in uh, November. And when I get down from the tram, I was looking around and I felt something is going on. And I couldn't let myself to get at home, even the, the, the weather was just awful. And I said to myself, I feel something, is something in the air here, just like in Phil Collins song. Something is in, in, is in the air and I have to discover what. And I took maybe five clicks, 
six clicks, six photos. And one specific moment, I arrive to this photo. And I close my mind and my eyes and I just uh, pulled the, the, the shutter. And it was that image that resolved my dilemma. I uh, just uh, have that answer that I didn't knew when I was getting down off the tram. And happily, it was a good answer. And the jury, which uh, choose among 3,000 photos, 300,000 photos, thought that this is the best picture in low light photography. What I want to underline here is that you have to listen to yourself and to your inner voice when it comes that something is not right, that something is going on, and you have to stay there and to resolve this dilemma. This is the way of discovering things. And I, I, I think this is the way of doing good photography, to be aware of yourself in the surroundings that you are just passing then. The inner child is happy to, to do photography. And this is a picture I took in Marseille uh, with people, uh, with ch children playing. The first chapter of uh, our alchemy, photographic alchemy, uh, are some observation principles that I would like to underline here. To see, it's to believe. People here in Bucharest don't really love their city. And I love Bucharest and I'm born in Bucharest. And I love, I try to love every city that I visit because there are good things everywhere in every person and in every city that I, I go, I try to find the good parts. I believe in this, so I start to see this. I don't see anything bad because I put this filter on and my filter is to discover the good part. Seeing is believing and observation uh, put together some quantum laws which put the world in that state that activates some layers. If you want to find something, something will come upon you and you will discover it. This is the, the first law in street photography. You have to want to discover, you have to want to believe that something is there and something will just happen there. Every photography that I take uh, can underline this and can be a, a, a witness of this. Observing is very important because by observing you change your behavior, you become more aware and you connect yourself better with the city and with unknown people in the daily life that you start to see, to hear, to feel in the way that you integrate yourself into it. Uh, the photographer is a very mm, interesting and uh, special person because he has time, space, light, and emotion into his, uh, in, in the tip of his right finger uh, when he uh, click to take a photo. This image is showing this kind of uh, different worlds that we uh, see as photographers and no normal people that uh, come to, to erase the, themselves because I think photographers had another kind of, of pair of eyes that can see more than other people. Seeing is observing. It's the flaneur of, the, of uh, Baudelaire. You don't have to be active always, like in the world, with your camera uh, searching and doing things. You have maybe sometimes just to put yourself away, just to sit down and observe and to gather your mind and your thoughts, and being the flaneur. The flaneur is a paradoxical, paradoxic, paradoxal person because he's integrating itself in the human landscape, but also he's collateral. So it's very interesting to be on the both sides in the same time. It's nice just to observe people. I love to look at people and my inner child just adore to be close to them and, and to see what they are doing in, in, in the streets and to catch this very special moment that people share. Without photography, it would be some wasted, beautiful moments. The photographer has a special eye and can put everything in order just to get the perfect photo. 
This is a picture of the Ateneo in Bucharest. It's a normal photo. It's just a casual photo that I didn't even post it on my uh, social network because it's a photo about discovering the right place to be. I was there and I discovered these pigeons staying there on that metal bar. And I thought, what about the right perspective? Am I sitting good here or I, I, I have to to switch the perspective to discover something else. And I switched the perspective and I uh, make some, some steps. Um, I move, just moved myself from there and put a little zoom into my photo. And I managed to put that uh, pigeons on the Romanian Ateneum uh, fr front side. It's just a matter of perspective. If I was going for the first time there in from this perspective, I would discover it from the first time. But here I let my instinct tell me that something is going on and I have to be in the right place. And I just let myself discover uh, the right place just as um, Hercule Poirot would discover the, the perfect place. So, it's very important where you put yourself, what trajectory you, you gain. And every step you make, every step you take, like in Sting's song, it's very important. It's important not to do random stuff, just to do the right thing. What about the right thing? I don't know. Everybody has the right thing to do, to be, to think, and to, to, to make. This is another uh, random picture that I took just to put the next picture into the perfect light. It's my university there in the background of architecture. Things may be like this in perfect place. It was a beautiful light in that uh, day in Bucharest. And I discovered these bicycle structures here where you, you rest your, your, your bicycle. And I, 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 I saw that shadow uh, there and I, I said to myself it has to be a good photo here, but I have to discover the right angle So I just uh, crawled and put myself into the right angle You see the Sun it's coming there from from that perfect spot and that pigeon that it's searching to To get on the facade This is the place that you can see every day and you can say there is nothing there the same place in the good light with the good angle of viewing and the good moment can reveal itself in a kind of magic way. So this is uh, possible for every spot in the city. Every spot in the city can be put in the perfect light and to discover the perfect moment. Speaking of details, everywhere you can find nice details and some anecdotes, this is in Istanbul, where uh, on Galata Bridge, I think, that you should put yourself into the right angle and you will discover something new. And I just love to discover new things on the city and on the people. This is a nice uh, sporty lady uh, here in, in my own town. Yeah, I, I just enjoyed watching her uh, playing that ball in a very, um, how do you say that the basketball master? Uh, I don't know, like in NBA, Jordan. I like to put myself into stories and to be witness of stories. Uh, the Ateneo in Bucharest with the pigeons and that young lady there discovering the world and uh, the parents and the grandfather just uh, getting there to, to do a nice thing. I do like stories and I like to discover stories in the city. And I think photography is about telling visual stories. This is somewhere in Paris in the Palais Royal Park. And I just love to put myself into the right angle and to be witness to a nice and emotional moment. But on emotion, I will speak later. It's a matter of space and geometry. People used to say, that, um, well, I'm an architect and I can see uh, lines and everything in, in the right direction. I used to say that where you can see lines, where you can see angles, a, a perspective may came out of nowhere, so you can take a photo. Space is very important because we tend to ignore lines, directions, diagonals, 
the equilibrium between, uh, between some elements. The negative space is extremely important in putting the subject uh, in, the, in the right place. And of course, the depth of field that we like to be shallow in street photography usually. What I try to say is that uh, a good street photographer have a good relationship with space, with lines, with uh, everything that might uh, become a perspective. And uh, here is in Luxembourg, this is one of my uh, most uh, loved, beloved photos. In, uh, I, it was taken even in Luxembourg in 2008 on film, of course, and it's a matter of lines and geometry that brings together some sense of order. And I like very much this uh, con contrast between order and disorder to be put in perfect balance into street photography. This is summary Montpellier perspective upon the old city. And I just love the textures that gives us a sense of spatial perspective. Of course, in Berlin, perspective you can play with, looking downwards, looking upwards, looking front. And uh, usually uh, there are kind of very catchy images playing on black and white maybe and on ni nice contrasts and textures. So this is the language of street photography. Here it's in Paris at uh, Centre Pompidou. This was a lonely person just staying. Uh, just ignoring everybody else. And I saw that lines there that uh, conducted my view to that row of persons waiting to get into the museum. And, and I had my uh, 85 lens. It was impossible for me to choose. Even I was uh, cutting his legs or I, I was cutting the head of that row. And I choose to cut that, uh, that row like this and to put this into the right perspective making these discrepancies and uh, contrast between, between being uh, lonely, being distant, being here. So it gives us a nice sense of space. Here my students discovered that the number of bicycles and of people is equal with the number of pigeons. I couldn't put this myself with my own hand. So um, I think this is also the magic of photography. Uh, when things come together and not knowing, but having that feeling that something is happening there. As I already told, you have to develop this feeling which stops you and, and, and put yourself aware that something is going on. For me, it was some pigeons getting together, but it was more. And usually a good photography can reveal more in, uh, of the world around us. This is uh, in a Romanian nice city. Usually Romanian people are very inventive and smart and they uh, manage to discover new ways of doing things. So for street photography, this is, can be unlimited subjects because in spite of using that zebras there, they of course used to take the diagonal, which is shorter, and they gave me the occasion to, to take this photo, uh, which uh, is very inspiring for, for me, for the Romanian spirit perspective lines and putting things into the right measure maybe. Here is of course at, uh, in, in Paris at uh, François Mitterrand Bibliothèque. And I just used that lines to get this sense of perspective and, 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 and space. I love to, to do this and to discover things. Uh, letting space to tell a story. Here in Venice, a nice perspective took also on film with Aqua Alta. And uh, you gather this sense of textures and elements which coming together in contrast. Space and perspective just inspire me, along with that sense of direction, lines, angles, uh, tones, everything that can conduct uh, the eye. Here is one of my first pictures took in, uh, taken in uh, Ostende in Belgium. I tried to remake this picture every year I, I, I get there and I try to be there every year because I just love that place. But this is the first picture and the best. I discovered that I could not repeat myself. I never took a better shot 
than the first shot that I ever took in, in one place. So don't try to repeat yourself because it will be impossible. Just try to do their, uh, your best for the first time and for the definitive first time because it will be the best moment. A sense of perspective, of space, of guiding lines, lights, shadows, uh, to move and to stay, this um, contrast here make this picture to be um, pretty uh, dynamic. As, as this one also in Palais Royale, which is one of my favorites, which gains a sense of perspective and also the little child there in, in the right corner give us the sense of the perfect moment. Here is a tribute, of course, to Cartier-Bresson. I was maybe 20 meters away. I saw that uh, lady with the red scarf with my uh, left eye. I saw that bicycle and I said to myself, I have to make this photo. I have to be there downstairs and to take this photo. And it was such a uh, specific and, and uh, uh, immediate reaction to something that came into my mind and I had to resolve immediately. Or oh, this frame in Bucharest, where the atmosphere of morning, it's uh, the most interesting maybe actor and this rhythm given by the pillars and by the, the people with the same maybe space between them. I'm coming now on um, opposites because opposites give this contrast, black and white, far and near, uh, more people, less people, uh, individual or group. This gave a nice contrast and the, the sense of perspective. I was speaking on lines in Berlin, you can find uh, lines and perfect geometries and textures, which brought me here at, in, into this image. If you draw a line between that uh, man on the left head, the man which sits in the center head, and the people which are down there on the stairs, you get a straight line maybe, which describes also the line of, of the diagonal stair. Everything is geometrical here, everything conducts the view, and this is the basic thing that you can do everywhere. Just if you feel yourself uh, unlucky or without inspiration, just follow the lines and they will tell you a story. I follow here the lines in the old city of Bucharest and I discovered a nice pal and we were having a chat and he decided to be uh, uh, the important person, the VIP in, in my photo and posed excellent while the perspective brings all the view onto his face. What about the light? The light is the ingredient, the special ingredient, uh, which drives me when I don't know what to do. Well, you could find lines, as I, as I said, you could find perspective, you could find, but when you have natural light, when you have sunshine, when you have sun rays and shadows and contrasts, everything in my mind just blows and I, I, I become inspired immediately. So we speak about direction of light, intensity, tones, temperature, of course, of colors, and sensations that light, uh, light uh, can, can, can get. This is also in Paris, in Palais Royal. I was just following the shadows and uh, it's an unusual contre uh, image, which film resolved perfectly in, in that shadows. And it's a nice photo where I put the perspective to work for me here uh, and the natural light. Here is one of my favorite places in Paris where Last Tango in Paris was filmed. And I was, uh, I, I'm, I'm in love with that movie and with that uh, Paris of that time. So I came here to discover uh, the very footprint of that movie. And uh, every year I get there, I just try to do a better photo, to find the secret of that place. And usually with a good lighting and a good perspective, you can find something new. Getting out of time also, it will be an interesting issue to, to, to speak about because I discovered that the picture I like the most are the pictures that I can't tell when they were took, taken. It's impossible to say if this is a photo from 1980s or uh, took uh, one, or taken uh, one year ago. I can't say. So this 
uh, getting out of, of the present time is one of the secrets that I will come back later when I will speak about time, maybe in five or seven minutes. Perspective and light. These are the two most important ingredients in that alchemy of street photography. Movement, geometry. I was here in Copenhagen in my uh, hotel uh, window when I saw that cyclists came there and I just sat there and think to my, thought to myself, just have patience to take the good photo. Or here on Calle Victoria in Bucharest at a specific time at uh, maybe in, in, the final, uh, in the final days of August, the sun can be found exactly and precisely there at half past seven in the evening. Else uh, you couldn't take this, this, this image. And I just put myself there and waited for something to, to happen and that uh, bicycle came along and I just took this photo in order to have the perfect moment. Or in Tokyo, the same thing. I discovered the light, I discovered colors, but I couldn't uh, fix the subject. I just waited and the, subjects, the subject came upon me. As in Paris, the contour that I, I really like to, to make just to get this contrast. This is an image that I took by being invisible because on in street photography, it's very important not to disturb anything. You have to be absolutely invisible and silent because if you disturb your subject, you can't take your photo. So I was here near um, Lyceum uh, in Paris and I saw smoke, white smoke, but I, I thought maybe it's, uh, something uh, caught a, a, a fire, but not. It was some uh, pupils smoking um, this uh, uh, thing, Turkish thing, and uh, nargile, we say. And I just put myself into the right light, into contre jour, and I just took the click at the perfect moment, and I discovered the secret of that mystery uh, smoke. Also in Bucharest, at very moment time, you can do nice photography just uh, putting together lights and, uh, and this contrast. Let me show you this. This is a hard light column, as I can say, in the bureau area of Bucharest. But also you can have in a negative way, because here you have your light of sun, sunshine of light, but in a negative way. So it's the positive object and negative by absence. But this light, it's here the, the, the main subject in the both ways. So you have to put yourself in friendship with lighting to understand the principles of natural lighting. This is a nice photo also why I, I don't try to, to embrace myself, but uh, you, there, I, I came upon some photos that I, I really love because I remember the moment and what I felt at that specific moment. I discovered that if I take a step, I might put myself in perfect balance between light and shadow. And as I like very uh, much uh, Johnny Mitchell's albums, Between Light and Shadow, it's a 70s album where she played with Pat Metheny and Jaco Pastorius. So with this in mind, I just came upon this situation and I told to myself, whoa, between shadows and light, excellent. Let's take this photo at half past 11 in the morning in Bucharest. Or why not in Chicago, this is taken in 2011, when I discovered what we call by separatrice in Romanian, I don't know how to call it in, uh, in, in English, it's just uh, this uh, medium line uh, which put together like two frames, uh, the left frame and the right frame, but being of course a single frame, but different things happens here and there and just the light and the shadow and the movement of people uh, make the whole story. Also the same story in Bucharest, shadows, lights, textures, perspective, I just have this uh, joy, inner joy when, when I come upon these situations. This is one of my favorite in Paris. It was final of December, ending of December. And this was this um, fantastic poetic light 
uh, with some kind of you know, atmospheric light. And I just put myself into the right place just to cover the, the sun with that light and just balanced the perspective and waited for something to, to happen. And that bicycle came, came, came uh, upon and I just took that photo. It's one of the Paris photos that I love the most. What about time? Time, they say, it's the most dangerous enemy that we can have here on this world. But for a photographer, time can be an ally. And if you come upon this concept that I already um, mentioned uh, in, in, in my speech, if you can take the time outside of your photos, your photos became timeless. Like here, for example, it's an interesting uh, um, double image here. The images are taken uh, two years uh, distance. And it's just an allegory of being in the city and being a human in the city. What about time, the passing time? I just love to visit and revisit same places, but in different times, just to see how they live and how they can find themselves in different situations. About time, this is also in Paris and I came back in a couple of seasons and I discovered uh, I can discover very different things in the same place at different times. But getting time outside of your photos, like here in Montmartre, I can't say if it's a photo to, uh, that I took this year or if it's a photo of the 70s. Uh, I discovered this to be a nice ingredient of street photography uh, that became like an archetype. You can't say when it was taken, so it came just outside of, the, of the, um, the real time. This is a photo that I took maybe in 2010, but you can say that it's a photo of that last tango in, in Paris from the 70s. Reflecting the, herself into that uh, review, maybe it was her when she was younger, but it's a nice parallel dialogue between times and time dimensions. And I think, well, I can't cover the time subjects here in five moments, but I think on time, we have to do some kind of philosophy and to think how to bring time or to get out time from our photography. I think emotions are the best triggers for doing photography. I ask to myself, do I feel emotion? Do I feel something? Do I react somehow? Yes, when I feel something, I do react by taking a photo. It's the best way of explaining what was happening there after that you took the photo. I tell to my students also and to, my, uh, and to the people who come to my classes, you have to listen to your emotions in order to communicate them through photography. A perfect photography without emotion and without any kind of vibration, it's a sad photography. It's better to have some kind of, uh, well, misplaced, things, but to have a lot of emotion. This is a picture about other picture that I didn't took. It was a picture that I refused to get closer to that person. She, wore, she had a big uh, drop from her eye, just uh, getting down. She was very sad. And I paid my respect by sitting there and just uh, nodding and giving her uh, a, a nice look. Well, Bucharest paradoxes, emotions that can be even positive or negative, but you have to feel and you have to, to be able to um, acknowledge what kind of, of emotion uh, you, you find in, in that moment in yourself. This is a very nice situation. What I like here is that everybody's smiling, even the moon, even the people that were carrying it, even the people on the streets. And as you can see there, a man and a woman uh, between the two uh, parts of that moon and uh, homme et femme uh, written there in, in that uh, store. So this is a nice and interesting uh, putting together things. People of Bucharest, they just love to be actors in, into some photos when on Sundays they do uh, absolutely uh, how do you say when things are uh, 
futile. It's, they just do things just to do things there sometimes and a nice sweet anecdote come along with that photos. Usually people do kiss when I'm around, so I think it's a thing that I have inside me. Uh, I usually <laughs> um, discover lovers and I just love to be there in spontaneous mode and uh, invisible mode, just to be there and to be part of their story and to, to take with me something of their love. Maybe as Doru told us that to live is to love, maybe this remained inside me and I tried to, to, to get some love in order to give some love. As in the Beatles song, the love you make is the love you take. You see, it's a lot of music in my photography speech because I'm very close to, to, to the music which inspires me. Also in Paris, different situations. I just love to be there and to discover uh, things like this like uh, Mickey Mouse there uh, sprinkling with, with magic, but that uh, two young lovers which were already uh, fatigue, fatigue. It was a nice uh, moment. These moments of grace, and I'm preparing you for the last chapter because we are getting out uh, of, of our time. The state of grace, it's about concomitants, about being there, about getting the vibration, about putting yourself into the vibration, about reacting, seeing the right moment, bringing harmony and getting the bliss by the press of the shutter. This is how the state of grace uh, come to you. This is how the state of grace um, become. And these are my, my most maybe intense images where I discover that I don't have to think, that I just have to be there and to vibrate. And something of that, those people's stories came into me. And this is how we, 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 I connect, not we, I connect through my street photography with the world by getting something with me, being there in the right moment and by not knowing before anything on, on what I'm, I, I'm about to do and about to, to, to react. These are some images that I just took being there, being in Bucharest, being in Paris, being anywhere, because anywhere you can find magic, anywhere you can discover things, anywhere your inner hero wants to react and to, 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 to get along with you in, in, your, um, in your walk. And everywhere there is magic that is waiting to be unveiled only through photography because photography is that magic tool, as I said, which gives this alchemy between moment, time, emotion, space, everything goes on there in that specific moment. And I uh, hope that I inspired you uh, with my presentation. And of course, you can find me on my social networks. I can, we can uh, stay for, for some questions now. And I'm, uh, I hope you understood my, my English and you enjoyed my presentation. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Vlad. That was great. I think we had a, a great time with you and so many great pictures. Um, thank you. Yes, and I, I was vibrating. Uh, different moments, uh, different, uh, uh, yes, really great. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. So uh, now it's the moment, uh, the time for some questions. So I have noted, I've picked up some that, uh, let me see where they are. Should I stop my uh, screen presentation? I beg your pardon, what was the question? Should I stop my presentation or should I can leave it there in the background? Uh, maybe we can see you in bigger, okay. bigger style, yes. Because the, the pictures are still in our, our minds, I think. Okay. So it's okay. Excellent. <laughs> Good. So the first question that arrived us, it's very interesting from Catalin. Um, I saw that you have uh, black and white and colored pictures. Yes. When do you decide in what direction you want to drive a photo? when you take it or in post-processing? Actually, when I take it, because you see, when I worked on film, I carried with me three cameras. One was just for making off, but the two main cameras, I carry with color film and black and white film and just switched the lenses. And it was upon me to decide what to do uh, because it was my exercise there in the field to decide what to do. 
to put myself into this decision uh, mode and to say, I think this is the black and white frame. I think this is a color one. Uh, when I see things, I decide that I will keep it color and I will make it in color mode if I had an, a color uh, accent, an umbrella, some uh, yellow t-shirt, some uh, pink things, I don't know. But when it's on perspective, lines and textures, I do prefer black and white. So I try to think uh, in that very moment how it should be. Now when I'm working in digital way, uh, normally you see it's a problem. If I'm doing the photo for, for myself, I will make it black and white. But if I post it on social media, the social media doesn't react well in black and white photography. Instagrammers love photography, but if you can't have some 5% red in your picture, you can't attract uh, their reaction. So usually for um, social media, I use color photos. And for my own purposes, I use black and white photos or for clients. And sometimes I do have the courage, I do have the guts to post a black and white photo when it's absolutely uh, obvious that it should be black and white. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second question from Mary, um, she says, I love your point of view, but when do you decide to go out for shooting? A need, a feeling, an occasion? Do you plan it? It's simple, I get out every day. So you can't say it's a planned stuff because I go out every day to go to university, to go to do things in the city, and I take the time to walk by maybe 25,000 steps. So I do my uh, daily walk having with me a camera or my phone. It depends. Uh, it depends on, on my feeling. If I want to feel some big camera, I just take my, 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 my digital camera. If I want to be uh, in stealth mode, I take my, my Ricoh and I just put it inside my pocket. If not, I just use my, my mobile phone and I take uh, daily photo as of observation images. I just take photos. I usually don't plan anything because it's already planned to get, to get out. I don't know where, I don't know how, I usually look to the sky in the, in the morning because uh, I like to, to feel if it will be a nice sunset. People here in Romania adore sunsets on social media and I usually deliver nice sunsets on, 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 on my channels. So it's a matter of intuition on how the day will be depending on the lightning, on the clouds, on the atmosphere, I don't know. But usually I don't plan anything because it's impossible to plan yeah. the unknown. Yeah, as you said, I noted that uh, being at the right time, at the right place without knowing what's going to happen. <laughs> this is I, my I, challenge. I like that. Thank you. Okay, another question uh, from some, uh, someone with a lot of numbers, eight, seven, etc. So uh, he says, I, uh, great philosophy. I understand the, the concept of welcoming things as they are without following some fashion. However, were you, not, were you not still following unconsciously some standards? Master Yoda himself was following older Jedi masters. So this is a philosophical, philosophical question. It's a very good question. I think we all have this kind of common uh, spirit where it came from the Big Bang or I, I don't know where of God, depending on what uh, side you choose and what image you choose for, for him. And I think we have a common uh, unconscious uh, space. I like uh, a lot to read the books on, on, on philosophy and I think we are all related to the same kind of truth. So Master Yoda may have known this part of the truth. Street photographers can um, arrive at a specific uh, knowing things of a part of the truth. But I think the truth is unique and it's somewhere that we can uh, uh, reach any, 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 anyone, anybody can reach a part of this truth. And we start to, to, to uh, speak the same language when it happens. So I think Master Yoda or me or you, we just 
keep ourselves connected to the same source. Thank you. So a question from John. Uh, I wonder whether Vlad thinks his background education as an architect contributes to his eye, to his photographical eye. For sure, you know, Brancusi wouldn't be Brancusi without being uh, the student of uh, uh, the art school of, in, in Paris. I think educating yourself, it's good. Um, of course, maybe the, the University of Architecture uh, put this background on me. But, you know, I started photography after I finished the school. So maybe when things uh, were getting together in, in inside me and in my conscience, I think um, the feeling of space may be grown and uh, taught in school, but the skill of knowing how to read the space, I think it's very personal and it may be discovered through photography. So uh, I think even the, there are, um, not all of us are architects of course, but I think every man, everybody can grow its spatial spirit by uh, making photography. Good. Thank you for keeping the, the reply short. That's good because we want to reply to everybody. Yes. So there is a question from uh, Daniela. Uh, hey Vlad, what do you say to people who disagree with you verbally after taking their photo on the street? That's a, well, a Actually, typical this question. Is a very good question. Photo, yes, mm -hmm. of course. It's a good question. And I may say that it never happens. And I know many people would raise an, uh, an eye, uh, yeah, eyebrows like eyebrow that. <laughs> immediately because, whoa, how is this? I do enter in those situations where my energy can come into harmony. When I feel that something is not right, I simply do not approach and I do not take the photo. Uh, after this, by doing as I do, when people find themselves into photos on social networks or I, I don't know where, they used to thank me and they asked me to give them the photo because they simply loved that photo. So being positive, hang, having a positive view on the people and on the city life put me into positive situations. And if something is wrong, I simply do not react. And I, I'm basing myself on my intuition and on my emotion. Uh, by feeling by feeling the good vibrations. Good. Yes, you you, you turn yourself invisible <laughs> with your good vibrations. <laughs> you know, uh, making yourself comfortably in the street, acting like it's your job to be there with mm -hmm. the camera on your hands. It's the best cloak that you can wear in the street. Good. <laughs> um, a general question from Dan Danielle. Uh, what actions do you make to be in a good state? Do you walking, meditate or other activities? <laughs> Actually, yes, this is a good question. I myself am an uh, inner orientated person. I'm not very outgoing. I don't like to be in crowded places with uh, uh, people that make noises. I try to find myself at the seaside, for example, or in the city getting my own way, my own trajectories, where I can control space and things. I do listen good music. I do listen jazz music, uh, Pink Floyd, Pat Metheny, uh, John Patitucci. I find this music to be very inspiring and help me uh, find an inner peace. And when I walk, I try to find inner peace. Mm -hmm. So everything on me, it's finding inner peace. And the photography is just a way of showing this. Good. Yeah, we can feel the music in your, in your pictures, really. Good. Uh, just a comment from uh, v Vital. It's not a question, and I'm wondering what it means. You, you are a master, for, for V, for this person, a master of negative space. Okay, thank you. I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe... It means that I leave enough space between the subjects and the background. Okay. Uh, as the subject to gain space and it's hollow maybe of, uh, of getting into the site. And this correspondence between background and the, um, the four plan is very important in photography because it brings a sense of connection and spatial connection. Okay, good, great. That's a concept that's it's really new to me. 
So I'm learning things. Thank you. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it will be the thing, this, the last one. Um, let me see what, where it is. That's a remark actually from John. Perfect emotion over technical perfection. I really love that thought. So emotion about, uh, perfect emotion above technical perfection. I can sum up a little bit your, your approach, uh, Vlad. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I have a look at my at the chatting box. So uh, everybody loved the presentation. I see where people are thanking you. So that's Excellent. a good I'm point. Glad. I'm extremely glad that I, I, I am here with you. And it's such an, a great honor and uh, pleasure to... to Put myself in front of you. Well, you gave us uh, lots of uh, advices, uh, lots of secrets, uh, how you do things, and we can only learn from you. That's, uh, Thank the, you. that's good. I loved also that you said that uh, uh, don't follow recipes, find your own way. That's very nice. So, Vlad, it was really a, a nice moment we, we, we passed with you. Uh, thank you. So, um, maybe we um, or people can. Uh, afterwards, we can give the, the, the Instagram account, your, your uh, internet account, we can of give course. that on our uh, street festival page. Um, so, thank you very much. Uh, I you. think I, I thank all the people that were following us quite a lot, and also all the people that were asking things, asking, uh, putting questions. Uh, well, thank you for the Rotonde that, uh, you know, hosted the whole thing. Uh, our collective is working together with Rotond with, for this festival. So I want to know, okay, I want to know, um, let me see, I got a message here. Okay, yes, just to remind, tomorrow we've got a third conference from uh, New York. It's uh, Joe, Joe Aguirre, so Joe Aguirre, I, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting again. So um, I invite all the people that were here again to connect themselves tomorrow uh, each time we get uh, information advice and uh, and all these kind of things um, someone is saying to me i should keep a little bit longer so let's improvise <laughs> let Vlad, me, what, what let is me... your projects now what are your projects my projects for now it's to thank katalin burlaku to thank you and to me <laughs> Catalin, we have to thank Catalin. Yes, he's a big yes. fan of yours and he's a good uh, he, photographer. Uh, he's the, my, my guide for being here and I, 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 I just want to, to, to thank him. And I thank you all because you made this possible. And actually by speaking now, I gained a very much appeal to do photography because I miss, I, I, I'm staying at home uh, for, for two, two months already. And I just uh, take sunset pictures and uh, sunrise <laughs> pictures. But okay. um, uh, seeing these images, just memories are, 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 are getting back. And I now, in, in the point of my fingers, I do have this energy to get outside and to do photography. So if you feel like uh, alike, uh, I hope after we, we can um, be outside, of course, with this uh, condition, uh, to start, to restart, to do good photography and to discover our, our inner heroes uh, on the streets. Okay. As a project, uh, I don't have an ongoing project. I do teach at the university online, and I'm willing to, to get all outside. This is uh, yeah. Let's go outside. We are all you know impatient to get uh, to go again outside and have this connection with the world and enjoy the, the sun and the people and being there. The you know, elements, there. elements. Okay. So now, yeah. Thank you, Vlad. Again, thank, thank, thank you. you, everybody that was there. So tomorrow we meet again. Maybe you can join us, Vlad, tomorrow if you have time. Yes, of course. <laughs> It'll be my pleasure. Uh, stay a little bit in the chat room, Vlad, for okay. afterwards a small, a small beer drinking, <laughs> internet beer drinking. So everybody, thank you for this nice moment we had together. And well, let's close the session and meet again tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.